strangest lives on the planet. They are also among the most widespread groups of organisms. Whether you love them, or hate them, or don't know anything about them, they play a great role in the world's ecosystem, and even economy. How did you learn all this, you might ask? The answer is simple. Come with me on a fascinating journey to find out more about the amazing lives of the disgusting creatures that you and I know as parasites. Disgusting? Disgusting is just a word. And you too will learn to forget about it after you've seen what I've seen. Here I am, waiting to find out more about parasites. But before me, what do other people think about these creatures? Alright, so I wonder what people think about parasites. So I've decided to ask all of my friends at my dorm. Hmm. Uh, what do you girls think about parasites? Um, it depends on the... No, parasites are bad, no. <laughs> parasites? Huh. Uh, they're bugs. Wow, such a bore. <laughs> about parasites or you tell Parasites. My boyfriend is a parasite. Parasites are everywhere in all the surfaces and if I start worrying up, uh, too much about them, then I won't really have, you know, a decent life. Well, are the parasites bad? And they're not. They're a part of the world, so... As you can see, the outlook isn't very good. That's why I'm here in the Natural History Museum, to learn it from the experts. Who is it that you're here to see? Eileen Harris. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember they're coming now. Hi. Hey to see Eileen. Yeah, yeah, it's Hi. me, Mamma. Oh, yeah, I'm Emma. Nice, nice to, to meet you. you. I work with Eileen. Okay. Uh, I'm here to, you know, maybe she's told you about it, this shoot, this documentary about parasites and all that. Only a little bit. Yeah, it's exciting. This long way led to the Darwin Center, where innumerable organisms from all around the world are collected and categorized. Among them are parasites too. Hello, Ali. Thank you. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Hello. Where would you like to go? Uh, here, actually. What would you say that the public perception of parasites is like? public perception of parasites is that they are something yucky and horrible and nasty, but they're not. Well, they can be a little bit. Every single organism in the world has its own parasitic worm. Everything from insects right up to blue whales. This one is my favourite worm. This is a giant tapeworm, mm -hmm. okay? named Diphlobothrium polyrugosum. Okay? It's a scientific name. Mm -hmm. It comes from a killer whale. Oh which was stranded on the coast of Devon. And that is one worm. It is enormous, okay? They go up to 40 or 50 meters in length. Oh. I've never actually measured this one, but it is very, very large. And this worm and I have been absolutely everywhere together. The children love them. Mm -hmm. the children love parasitic worms, actually, because they have a very high yuck factor. And for one children's program, I actually took the top off and got a fork and did it that way? <laughs> and they said, oh, vermicelli, pasta. Um, <clears throat> I later learned that some people take the vermicelli metaphor literally. The natives in Papua New Guinea, if they kill an opossum or something for their lunch, they will eat the tapeworms that are found in the animal as well. They don't have the same sort of attitude to them as we do. In fact, one of the tapeworms is actually called edulis, which means edible. Sorry, esculenta, which means edible. No matter how nice they taste, I also learned that some worms do quite freaky things to their hosts. This, for example, 
mm -hmm. is a fish. Okay? But if you look carefully, and you probably can see it, yeah, yeah. sticking out of the fish is a tapeworm. Now it grows to a reasonable size in that roach. Now that parasite doesn't want to stay there. It wants to get into a fish eating bird. So it alters the behavior of the fish to make it more likely to be eaten. So it makes that fish swell up mm -hmm. and swim near the surface of the water. <laughs> so that it's much more likely to be eaten by a bird than any of the others. As awesome as these examples are, being a parasite is not about being a disgusting worm living in a fish's body or the clothes we wear or the music we listen to. No, parasitism is a way of life and creatures as different as copepods, isopods or even our close relatives the fish have evolved a parasitic lifestyle independently. To better examine this diversity, let's take a look at a bunch of parasites. Our first guest is a kind of copepod, a crustacean that has an eye for eyes. Hi. Okay. okay. Hello there. Hi. Hi there. Hi. Uh, Whatever. What? Okay. Cool. Um, and this and is the animal, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oops. That's the that's the merchandise. Yeah. Okay. Well, these are parasitic copepods, Omata coita elongata. They're quite big for parasitic copepods. This is a specialist parasite in the eye of the Greenland shark, and it's extremely common. They're hugely abundant. There are 100 copepods on the planet for every insect, and they have switched from free-living lifestyles, which is the ancestral lifestyle, into um, a parasitic lifestyle in numerous different occasions. The fact that it's happened repeatedly must mean there's a huge advantage to it. Well, obviously, there's a fantastic food source readily available for, for a parasite. And for me, I'm interested in behavioural aspects as well. So most copepods have an array of sensors that say, there's a fish coming, you better escape. Um, a little fish parasite, it has an array of sensors, the same array of sensors. Evolution gave it that basic equipment. These sensors say there's a fish coming, but its response to that signal is different. It turns towards it because a fish represents food to a parasite, whereas to the vast majority of copepods, fish is the enemy because they're going to eat them. So a really interesting behavioral change, and how that might have come about is a fascinating subject for study. Sounds strange? Well, your eyes aren't the only part of your face that parasites are after. Here, we have a very interesting isopod, a relative of your garden pill bug that goes for your tongue. Hello, man. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> this is Memo. I'm. Hi, Miranda. Uh -huh. Should you feel me? <laughs> yeah. 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 It's this one. I don't know if you can see it very clearly in there. I support basically the scientific term for, um, let's say, wood lice. For terrestrial, I suppose people use the common term wood lice, and for anything that's marine or living in the water, they, they call them isopods. If you come close up, you can actually see they have little hooks on the end of each leg there, and so that's used because they're parasitic to grip. Um, on the tongue surface. Usually the females are there for breeding purposes and actually sort of gnaw away at the tongue and um, you know so whenever the fish is feeding also this parasite is living in sort of symbiotically and um, getting food also. Um, back in 2005 they caused a bit of a stir here because somebody had actually bought a red snapper from the supermarket. I think this person was living in Lewisham, a part of South London and um, sort of after the cooking process they kind of <laughs> sat down to eat this thing and realised in, in the mouth there were one of these um, mm. tongue-eating isopods so it caused a bit of a stir in the media like the Metro free newspaper. Mm -hmm. What attraction do you think the parasitic life has for isopods or other creatures? 
Um, well, it's a mechanism of, of, of survival, isn't it? And um, and breeding purposes is great. You've got another organ organism to, you know, while you're laying your eggs and, and breeding to, to house it for you. Mm -hmm. So protecting you from any sort of extreme environments, so I think it's very beneficial. That every organism has to live, and unfortunately, sometimes you live on another organism to, to survive. That That's just the way life is, I think. But strange invertebrates aren't the only kinds of parasites around. Some of them are actually very close cousins of ours. Well, a fish may not look like a human, but unlike all other parasites, it's got a backbone. And perhaps because it's so close to us, these fish go for a very intimate part of your body. Let's take a look. Sorry, Eileen just sent us down quickly to pick up a fish, if that's all right. Oh, yeah. Hello, sir. Hey. Hi. The candiru, yeah? That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Ah. They're not very big. Oh, uh, yeah. The parasitic catfish is so named because they parasitize other fishes feeding on blood and skin and very often attached to the gills, which are rich in blood and drink the blood from there. Sometimes they actually enter the tissues of the fish, they bore their way in, drill their way in, and this is another way of feeding on the flesh and the blood. They are notorious and feared for being um, parasitic occasionally on humans because these small catfish with pointed heads um, can swim into the urethra um, of bathers. They've got backward facing spines on their, on their gills mm -hmm. and then it's said that if they've swum into the um, penis or vagina of a, um, a swimmer, a human swimmer, that, that um, Sur surgical removal is sometimes the only option. It's obviously uh, to be feared for being a human parasite and particularly for attacking the genitals. Um, this makes it a, a sort of a proper rounded horror story and this one might horrify us but it's only a little fish. It's not really as bad as it's painted. Parasitism is a very profitable way of life for a lot of creatures and it's possibly the only vertebrate parasite, they say. Clearly, you don't see parasitism cropping up in the vertebrates as a group very often, and perhaps that's because of their advanced body plans. They're sort of committed more to a vertebrate way of life, and you've probably got to be quite flexible with your um, developmental processes and, and, and body parts in order to be mm -hmm. um, a successful parasite. Um, it's a lovely example of diversity. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks okay. for your time. Not at all. It was a pleasure. I think, I would think, yeah. I mean, lots of people work on them all around the world, but there's masses we still don't know. Absolutely. I mean, there, there are so many we don't know the life cycles, we don't know the distribution. It's just amazing. It's an enormous field. Absolutely. Okay. And thank you so much. That's all right. It's a pleasure. So, that was my adventure with parasites. Today you saw many different creatures and you saw the myriad ways their lifestyle evolved in nature. Perhaps you were disgusted, perhaps you were bored, or perhaps you thought I was a big nerd. But most importantly, try to remember. Whoa! Ah. Most importantly, it doesn't matter if it's parasites, or birds, or even people like me. What matters is that with life, there is wonders and diversity all around us. And it's better to be aware of it, than to sit down, sit down and be a bum. Thank you very much. Don't need no gods when you have one.